Hello again, I'm Wojciech Nadachowski, and welcome to the penultimate session for the day uh, and a very exciting development around autistic advocacy in the workplace. Before I hand you over to our Chief Executive Officer, Andrew Davis, I would like to let you know that we are not taking questions in this session uh, and the Q&A panel has been disabled. Okay, that's enough from me. Uh, let me introduce you to Andrew Davis. Andrew, take, take it from here. Hi, everyone, and thanks, Boy. Thanks for joining this session in which we're giving you a sneak peek into Autism CRC Self Advocacy at Work website. Uh, as Boy just said, and for those who don't know me, my name's Andrew Davis, and I have the honour of being the CEO of Autism CRC. Autism CRC's vision is to see autistic people with quality of life and opportunity. And we've been working towards that goal since 2013 and continue to do so through a number of things, including high quality, impactful research and the translation of that research into usable practice guides, programs, evidence platforms and capacity building resources and through events like this. With regard to employment, the reason we're all here, we are critically aware that more than one third of autistic people are unemployed or underemployed with workforce participation rates for autistic individuals being less than half that of those without a disability and unemployment rates being almost eight times those without disability. We're delighted to have developed the integrated employment success tool known as IEST. This is an evidence-based practice guide for employers of autistic adults. An Australian version and a New Zealand version are available through our website. While we continue to fill the gap with regard to research, resources and forums to support the employment of autistic people, there is an evidence need for self-advocacy resources for autistic people in employment. That's why I'm delighted that we're here today to be able to give you a sneak peek into Autism CRC's Self-Advocacy at Work website. Developed by and for autistic people, the Self-Advocacy at Work website helps autistic people navigate the world of employment, understand workplace rights, and develop self-advocacy skills. Enough from me. I'd now like to introduce you to your tour guides, Brendan James and Hayley Clapham. Thank you very much, Andrew, for that warm welcome. And hello, everyone out there. Thank you for joining us. I'm just sharing my screen. Firstly, a few uh, introductions. I am Brendan. I am the Digital Product Manager for Autism CRC, and I get the pleasure to facilitate design and development for evidence-based products and resources that we build. And I'd also like to acknowledge Dr. Olivia, or Liv Gatfield, uh, who's our Executive Officer for the CRC, and Cheryl, who's the Manager of Research Translation. They were both our own tour guides in the world of navigating this project. And uh, there's a huge contribution as well from Ashton Butts, our project officer. Uh, they did a lot of work in the lead up to this program. And of course, Hayley, who is on the call today as well, who will be giving us a bit of a sneak peek walkthrough as well. They're the project officer for, for the program. And when it comes to evidence and actually consulting, uh, they did a lot of consultation work with ASAN, the Australian and New Zealand Autistic Self-Advocacy Network. So a big thanks to them as well. And of course, the working group themselves. Here's our lovely smiling faces. That was from the residential workshop. All of our working group are graduates of the Sylvia Roger Academy program. The Sylvia Roger Academy is an initiative of Autism CRC and runs empowerment programs for autistic adults in the areas of leadership, corporate governance, research. Uh, the latest one is autistic identity and connection, and of course, co-design. As Andrew mentioned, the rates of unemployment and underemployment of the autistic community is, is well documented and evidenced. Uh, there is, this is backed up and evidenced by a 2020 ASAN Australia New Zealand survey which showed that employment as the second most significant area of life that autistic people wanted self-advocacy resources developed for. Uh, we did a comprehensive environment scan or desktop review that showed there was absolutely no comprehensive toolkit 
for potential or existing employees that's accessible, appropriate, up to date or readily available in the area of employment and self-advocacy resources. We did find some out there that were sort of quite older, perhaps not co-designed, perhaps not as accessible to use. So we decided to actually create our own using our co-design process. And that was with the 10 Sylvia Roger Academy alumni. We first uh, upskilled everybody and then we put it into practice. We broke it down into these sort of phases. Uh, for those who want to know a little bit more about co-design, sometimes it's called human-centered design or inclusive design. It's known by many names. And sometimes the process can look a little bit different no matter who's running the process. But to us, it's an investigative and creative process that brings together everyone who are impacted by a challenge or a need, uh, together with those with knowledge and technical skills to jointly create the solutions. Uh, we aim to empower and put, in this case, people with the lived experience at the centre of the design process, uh, sharing the decision-making power and uh, help us to identify and understand the existing needs, the existing research and practices, but also get creative and ideate and design some possible solutions that will address the real-life challenges. So we started this process and, and adjusted it slightly. Uh, for example, the upskilling was done uh, over five different e-learning modules that I think was sort of one module per fortnight. We slowed it right down so that everyone could understand what phase of the process we were in. And when it came to the actual residential workshop, we leveraged our eight years of delivering academy programs to understand the nuances and ensuring that everyone could engage effectively. And we also had continued development and development once we'd finished that residential workshop, which we kept everyone involved with the actual development of the site itself. So one huge part of this is very much making sure the co-design is accessible. Uh, so obviously to make it accessible, we made sure that everyone learnt the process before we even engaged in it. For example, we didn't actually talk about employment in that first phase. It was purely just, here's a process, here's some activities under each of these steps. Let's learn them without having any sort of context towards employment first. And when it came to the actual workshop itself, everything was running to schedule that was shared, uh, made sure information and support were available. Uh, we also made sure that the space was quite inclusive, that there was structure to every sort of phase and design and session. We made sure that environmental factors were there. You know, let's get the beanbags out. Let's check the aircon temperature, the lighting and let's create a, a safe space for sharing. Um, very much a heightened sense of sort of communication, long breaks in terms of energy needs. I'm, I'm quite proud to say I snuck in a, a nap after lunch for this residential workshop because sometimes the activities that we do are quite draining. And we also made sure that uh, basically it was a safe space to share. Everyone gets to know each other, understands that it's a safe autistic space to actually share their lived experience as well. And when it comes to facilitating, we actually had a lot of flexibility. Uh, some people who are running a bit low on spoons might be back in their hotel room. We actually live stream what was happening in the room back to them so they don't miss out on anything. Uh, as you see there on the right, I think we ran out of post-it notes. Uh, and sometimes it helps when people just speak and we can dictate, you know, to actually write down the post-it notes if someone has a, a bold idea or, or struggling to sort of get a concept out, we sort of teased it out through dictation and, and just clarifying questions. The other thing, and we did check with the facility that this was okay, we, we stuck up the entire process on the wall uh, so that participants could visually see the process. If we'd moved on, we can come back to it. We can check that step one was step one and, and triple check what we said there before we moved on to step two. Uh, and you could also see what was happening in the future. So for future days, we had the other steps of the process further down the track to see. And we were talking about some pretty sensitive topics. We were, we were talking about sort of employment, which, which covers a range of sort of other topics as well. So there were scenarios there that could be quite uh, upsetting. So we made sure that everyone's wellbeing was a top priority as well. We had support people there, a big heads up about discussions that we will be talking about, topics that might be a little bit um, sensitive. And so knowing what questions and topics we were going to talk about up front. Uh, was quite sort of uh, comforting, as well as also making uh, sure we understood everyone's well-being in terms of what helps in terms of 
decompression time or um, what people need to navigate that sensitivity. And that was done quite well in terms of people understanding that sometimes to get creative and investigative, you do need to share that lived experience. And while that might be quite hard to do, it was actually quite powerful in the sense that it helped everyone bond in a similar experience as well. From there, we took the outputs uh, of the, the workshop and basically formed a wireframe, which you see there on the left, which looks pretty boring, of course, because it's just grayscale. It's just a wireframe. It was just the structure of a website. We summarized all of our resources, focused on the development itself in terms of layout, what technology we're going to use, what design. Uh, we had that actual wireframe built on the Sunday afternoon so we could help sort of visualize things. And we actually turned that into a clickable prototype, which is basically something that looks and feels like a website that we put in front of a different set of Sylvia Roger alumni to basically use a test with them to validate topics that we came up with, uh, lived experiences that people are familiar with. We also helped sort of, it also helped to prioritize the content that we were going to use in terms of, you know, I know some people use one resource for something else or validating that it's true there was no topic for a certain uh, topic at work. So that was quite good to help prioritize things. And the other thing too was this was a completely different group. Some of the actual working group with us tested with another group that had no context, no background, weren't in the workshops. So it was sort of a fresh eyes approach to see that the things that we had developed are actually needed and, and valuable to other people as well. And of course, we wanted to make sure that we weren't sort of losing sight of things that were coming out of the working group. Uh, for the program. So items such as accessibility, we wanted to make sure there was a higher focus on that. We wanted to make sure there was a representation of authentic voices. We wanted to make sure that remained. Um, basically the key themes and principles. Uh, for example, we defined work very much as not a, an office job. Work can be volunteering or just contributing to society in some other way. So we made sure that with every step of the way, that sort of principles and the themes that we talked about since day one remained as well. Um, from here, I'll, I'll hand it over to Haley just to give a little bit of a sneak peek of the site itself. Uh, Haley, I think if you can share your, your full screen now and give a bit of a walkthrough, that would be fantastic. Uh, thank you, Brandon. Um, hi, everyone, uh, and welcome to the Self Advocacy at Work website. Um, so during this sneak peek, I'll take you on a very brief tour and show you some of the key features um, of the website. Um, but before I do, just a brief introduction. Um, so what makes self-advocacy at work different and stand out uh, from other employment self-advocacy resources is that it has been developed by autistic people for autistic people. So the need for the autistic voice in resources was a key theme during the co-design workshops and use testing. All the content on the website has been created by autistic people. Um, okay, so to start uh, the tour, so we have here the homepage. Um, oops, let's move that out of the way. Um, so the main thing that stands out here is the three main uh, sections, and this is where the main content is, um, and we'll take a closer look at those shortly. Uh, so scrolling further down, uh, you have a very brief introduction to the About Us page um, and you'll also see there a photo of the project team and working group. Uh, now to show you some of the key accessibility features of the website. So at the bottom here, you'll notice these four buttons. Um, so these came out of our user testing um, where our participants highlighted the importance of having various accessibility features. So on this website, um, we have here dyslexia friendly uh, font. Let's see, that's what that looks like. There's also the ability to decrease and to increase um, the font. Now, if we scroll back up the top here, other two uh, related features um, are the two search functions. So during user testing, our participants frequently spoke of past experiences having difficulty searching for information. Either search results weren't relevant or they were having to wade through pages on a website trying to find what they were looking for. 
So to improve user navigation and access to access uh, to relevant information, we've included two types of search functions on the web page. The first is a simple text box um, where you can simply type what you're looking for. The other search function is more suited to situations where the user may not know what they want to look for, but they would just prefer to see what is available without having to search the entire website. Uh, so now we'll take a quick look at the three main uh, sections of the website. Again, these are where the main articles and content are. So the first section is self-advocacy. In this section, you will find content about self-advocacy, why it's important and how it can help autistic people in the workplace. There is also information about self-advocating for yourself and how to develop self-advocating skills. The uh, second section is my rights and entitlements. In this section, you will find information about the different types of work and what your rights and entitlements are in the workplace. And the third and final section is disability in the workplace. In this section, we have information about disclosure, disclosure in the workplace, supporting your well-being at work and workplace adjustments and supports. Uh, so now I'd like to show you uh, an example of one of our articles and the key features of them. Uh, so this article uh, is titled Why Self-Advocacy is Important. Um, so the first key feature that you will see uh, in the articles is the listening function. Uh, the option, This option enables the user to have the article read to them. Uh, so you have the play button, um, the length, there's also the ability to change the volume as well as download um, the file and change the playback speed. Um, the, this specific feature and the ability to access information in different formats was highlighted by our participants during user testing as a key need. Uh, and just to give you a brief example of what um, the articles sound like when they're read, I'll just play that now. Why self-advocacy in the workplace is important. Key points. Self-advocacy is a skill that can be learned and practiced. Self-advocacy can help you in the workplace and across your working life for many reasons. Why is self-advocacy important? Self-advocacy is a skill that autistic people can... Um, okay, and then underneath that, you'll see we have key points. Um, so this edition came, again, from user testing where participants indicated the importance of being able to preview an article or easily access key information within the article without needing to read the entire article. And then scrolling further down, we have the main body of the article, um, which contains information and resources related to the topic. Now, embedded throughout all the articles, prompts, suggestions and examples, the need for these was, again, something that was indicated during user testing. And then scrolling further down, we have a case study and a real life story. Uh, so during the co-design workshop and user testing process, we frequently heard from participants the need to include examples of real life experiences and the inclusion of case studies, videos and stories from autistic people. Our participants found that these were helpful and validating to their own experiences. So each of our articles contains a case study and a real life story. Um, dependent on the article, the real life story is either a video or it's in text. If it is in video, as it is in this particular article, there is a downloadable transcript, um, which can be downloaded and saved. Um, so with this particular article, there's video, um, so I'll just play a um, brief sample of that now. Hello, I'm Kirk and I'm a full-time user experience designer. Prior to this, I was an assistant 3D artist and graphic designer. I will be discussing my experience at work and how self-advocating has helped me in my career. And now going back to the homepage, there is one last key feature of the Self-Advocacy at Work website that I would like to show you. Uh, 
Um, and that is the My Self Advocacy Plan. Uh, so this is a template designed to help autistic people identify a problem at work, think of solutions and plan how to self-advocate for themselves in the workplace. It is customizable and it can be edited as well as exported and saved. And just to give you a brief overview, that's the general format. And we have, it's been structured into the issue, possible solutions, developing an action plan, reviewing the plan, and then sharing it. Hey. Um, well, thank you all uh, for your time and I hope that you've enjoyed seeing some of the key features during this sneak peek of the Self-Advocacy at Work website. And I want to hand you back to Brendan. Thank you so much for that, Hayley. You've uh, been a, a huge impact and driver of this program. So uh, I think certainly your thanks is, is very well deserved and, and not only from the, the wider autistic community, but also the working group who's, who's worked with you. So that's brilliant. It's, it's Fantastic to see people like Kirk, who's an alumni, uh, actually talking about why self-advocacy is important because it's a bit of a passion item for him, I know. And um, I, I always remember Kirk's sort of quote, which is very much about if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, which has, has stuck with me to this day, actually. So it's quite interesting. Um, so we are actually uh, planning to launch this site completely in the next few weeks. To be notified of that launch, definitely sign up for e-news at the bottom of the CRC website, which is autismcrc.com.au, and you'll be notified when we launch. Otherwise, you can follow us on socials. We're on the Facebook, we're on the Twitter, we're on the YouTube and, and LinkedIn. Um, and of course, if anyone has any sort of questions or wants to chat just in general about co-design or self-advocacy in general, please feel free to email me. Uh, I'm always up for a chat as well, and we can bring others into that discussion as well. Thank you very much. And I think I'll hand back to uh, Wojciech, who I think uh, if we've timed it right, Voj, we might have a bit more of a, a break between the next session. Uh, yes, you've you've given the attendees a little bit more time, which is quite a precious gift. Um, thank you, Andrew, Brendan and Hayley. Um, it's very clear that you've undertaken uh, a very rigorous process with co-design. Uh, the importance of self-advocacy has been raised a number of times for the summit. Uh, especially in the panel on HR and Jessica Caden's keynote speech. So for those who missed those, um, all of the sessions are on demand and all of yesterday's sessions and some of today are already available uh, in the platform. So this work is very timely. So this brings us almost to the end of the session, almost to the end of the day, one more session left. Before you head off, we'd really appreciate your feedback. Please take a minute to complete the session feedback form, which you can access via the tab on the right. Our final session is a panel discussion on supporting mental health in the workplace. To get there, please just click back on the home page or on the agenda page. You will see the session listed there as starting soon in about 20 minutes. When you're ready, click on the link and it will take you into the session. See you there.